Yes. Perfect. Okay, cool. So uh, I think we are ready for uh, um, the next speaker. Thanks again, uh, Pavish. Thank you. For being with us. And um, is Santosh around? Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Okay, so uh, the next speaker, um, the second speaker today is going to be Santos Rempala from, from Georgia Tech, who's going to talk about the, the communication complexity of optimization, a paper which appeared in Soda 2020 and uh, was, is co-authored by Wusung Wang and David Woodruff. So um, I don't think Santosh, uh, you know, uh, needs a lot of introduction. He's uh, uh, he has made uh, contributions to an amazing number of areas in uh, computer science uh, and uh, machine learning, data analysis, high dimensional geometry, randomized linear algebra, and more. And he is a fellow of ICM for contribution to algorithms uh, in convex, for convex set and the probability distributions. Um, so with that, I would like to uh, give you the stage. Thank you. Um, so uh, to continue with the uh, Pravesh's disclaimer, I'm no expert in economics, uh, but uh, fortunately my talk is not about economics. Um, um, uh, 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 the title of the talk is Fairness in Machine Learning where volume, oh wait, sorry, this is the next talk. Ah, this is my talk. Okay, so it's uh, Communication Complexity of Optimization. Um, and it's a joint work with uh, Rosong Wong and David Woodruff, uh, two youngsters at uh, Carnegie Mellon were doing amazing things. Um, so let me start with the problem, uh, with a problem, uh, uh, linear equations. Uh, we've all solved them many times uh, with the, uh, uh, the adjective distributed. Okay, so you, I think you can predict what the problem is going to be. We have S servers. Uh, the input to the problem is a matrix A, a tall matrix, uh, N rows, D columns, and a vector B, uh, as many entries as the number of rows. And each server has a subset of the constraints, an arbitrary subset. It's been arbitrarily partitioned. And so server I has the subset A superscript I, B superscript I of Ni constraints. The Ni's add up to N. Now each coefficient of the A's and the B's is specified using capital L bits. Or you can think of it as integers between minus two to the L and two to the L, just I guess L plus one bits. Um, and the goal is to solve AX equal to B or declare infeasible. Now, I, you note right away that uh, 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 this is entirely doable because the bit complexity of the exact solution is uh, dimension squared times L in the worst case. So we, we don't need to, uh, yeah, so this can, this can be done. So the question that sort of uh, 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 captures most of the spirit of this talk is how much communication do we need? Surprisingly, I, we, we didn't uh, find anything in the literature that addresses this. Uh, and, and so trivially, of course, what you could do is send, everybody sends all their uh, constraints to one server and then the server solves it. So it, it, the, 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 this one server knows the solution. And the communication is just the total input, which is NDL. A little bit less trivial, but also very easy is that each server checks its own subset Assuming it's feasible, it sends only the linearly independent subset of its constraints to the to to, to one coordinator. Uh, so uh, since you, you send at most d constraints, now the complexity becomes d squared l per server, and and then you know there's s servers. So that's also easy. A theorem that will more or less uh, prove completely well. We'll, we'll sketch all the ideas of in the stock is that the randomized communication complexity of solving linear systems in the coordinator model is uh, d squared L plus S times D. So dimension squared L plus S times D. And this is both upper and lower up to log factors, log in D and L. And in the blackboard model, I'll, I'll, I'll define both of these in a second, but again, the definition might be apparent from the name, is uh, in the blackboard model is a bit faster. It's d squared L plus S. Um, so that's, that's the, uh, please feel free to in, interrupt if you have questions or, or, or I'll monitor the, I'll try to monitor the chat as well. So stepping back, um, you know, optimization is of course uh, very useful and widely studied. And uh, one question is the communication complexity when the input is not at one location, that's distributed. 
And the two models we're looking at are the coordinator model and the blackboard model. Uh, the coordinator model is where uh, you have a bunch of servers and uh, they can all, you know, this could be one of the servers, the coordinator, but we just, just for easy, for convenience, we designated especially, uh, they can all speak uh, directly to the coordinator and, and back from the coordinator and not to each other. And you count every, every time you send a bit. So every pair of, uh, is, is counted. Um, in the Blackboard model, it's a common shared broadcast space. So if somebody, if a server writes to the Blackboard, everybody else can see it right away. And the cost is just the cost of writing. Okay, so uh, why study communication complexity? I mean, uh, just in case you haven't studied before, a classical reason is to prove lower bounds and it's been a very effective, fantastic tool for doing that. Uh, for example, in the streaming model, um, a contemporary reason is not just lower bounds, but also to prove upper bounds because the input really is distributed for many large scale problems. We see this all the time. And communication can in fact be the bottleneck uh, as opposed to computation. Okay, so many problems have been studied in this model over the past decade, especially. Uh, Interior computer science, you know, uh, principal component analysis, uh, regression, clustering, various graph problems, database problems, et cetera. And uh, there's also, it's also been studied in, in the machine learning and more uh, operations research optimization community, where the focus is more on the number of rounds of communication or the number of calls to various oracles as opposed to bit complexity. Here, uh, I will outline the following uh, uh, items. Uh, first, we'll do linear systems, the problem we started with, uh, both upper and lower bounds. And then uh, LP regression. Uh, uh, and here, the, we don't have the correct final answer, but uh, surprisingly, one can go beyond the previous approaches of sampling and sketching, that the communication complexity that you can get using sampling and sketching can in fact be improved by, by other methods. Uh, uh, and then we'll go to linear programs uh, where we, we will be able to show new bounds, but there will be a gap between the upper and lower bound, which I will highlight at the end as perhaps the most interesting open problem here. And, and finally, and, and similar methods will also have similar gaps for convex programs. Uh, just to emphasize, this is all in the unit cost RAM model. So we don't assume that we can operate, the cost is not one for arbitrarily long uh, uh, bits, but uh, I mean uh, numbers, but you, know, you pay proportional to the length of the number since we have to communicate these at the end of the day or during the hour. Okay, so back to linear systems. Um, so each server, as I mentioned, holds a subset of the constraints. And uh, the goal is to output a solution or in, say infeasible. And so uh, we'll, we'll see uh, that in, deterministically, uh, the tight bound is S T squared L. We already saw, the, it's, okay, we'll, we'll see this in a minute. And then uh, randomized, it's uh, S D plus D squared L. These are both in the coordinator model. And in the blackboard model, uh, it's, it's a little bit lesser S plus D squared L. So at least in the coordinator map, but in, for both deterministic and randomized in the blackboard setting. So in the coordinate model, randomization probably helps here to reduce the communication complexity. Okay. So here's a simple deterministic algorithm. So what follows in the next five, five, six minutes will be two uh, homework exercises, which are uh, probably the nicest part of this paper. So the first one is, is, is really uh, just an observation. Um, here's a deterministic algorithm. All servers are going to maintain a set C of linearly independent equations, the same set. The set starts empty and then in turn, so you go server one, two, three, the server computes the subset of its constraints that are independent of the current C and sends them to all other servers. That's it. You, you have this current set, everybody's computed it. You compute in your subset what is linearly independent and send it to everybody. And then at the end of the day, you have the full collection of linear, the linearly independent subset or you know it's infeasible and you solve it. Everybody solves it independently. Now the total number of constraints you're going to send is at most D. That's the maximum number of linearly independent ones. So the total communication is S times D times DL because uh, uh, yeah, so that's SD squared L, right? D constraints, each has D coefficients and each coefficient is L bits. So that's, that's, that's the upper bound, SD squared L. And later we'll see that this is the best possible for deterministic algorithms up to a log factor. Now, uh, here's a more efficient randomized protocol. Right, um, each server first tests the feasibility of their own linear system. Great, if it's infeasible, you stop. Otherwise each server, I'll call it PI, finds a maximal set of linearly independent equations. So far, 
no change, but this is all happening internally. Now, only the coordinator is going to maintain a set of uh, uh, the, the, the maximal set of linear independent equations, only the coordinator. It starts empty. Now we're going to go through the servers one by one, as before. But uh, it's server, the server, server one, let's say, will do the following log d times, only log d times. It calculates a random linear combination of the equations in its subset, of the linearly independent equations in its subset, uh, where by random linear uh, combination, I just mean that each equation is included uh, with, a, with, a, with a weight that's either minus one or one, probability half, just to half probability minus one, half probability one. That gives you one equation. So you do this to the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the equation, and you send it to the coordinator. The coordinator checks if the, the, the union is uh, infeasible. If it is infeasible, it's, you stop. Otherwise, you check if the new uh, uh, constraint is in the span of what's already there. If it's not in the span, you add it to the constraint. Anytime you add a constraint, you go back and do the following log d times this whole thing for this, for this, for this. You're still with server one. You're going to finish. Server one is going to finish its job before we go to server two. And server one, if what it sends ends up being a constraint that's added to C, then we go back and try to send another constraint. And if not, then we do it, we do this log D times. Still we have log D times that C is not added or it's, or it's infeasible. So uh, that's, that's, that's the whole protocol for one server, repeated for all servers. And then at the end of the day, the coordinator has a set of constraints, it solves it and you're done. That's the whole algorithm. Okay, so an analysis is based on the following um, uh, very simple lemma. Suppose I have two sets of uh, linear equations, S and C. And uh, suppose there is an equation in S which is linearly independent of everything in C. Then the claim is that with probability half, this random linear combination, right, is linearly independent of C. So if there is even one, then a random linear combination is linearly independent of the entire set. And why? Well, the proof is just that, suppose you take one such combination and uh, take the particular uh, uh, linear uh, equation A, which is not in C, which is independent of C, and uh, flip the sign of that one, just that sign. So now the difference uh, C minus C hat is either plus or minus twice that linear constraint. But we know that linear constraint is a linear independent of C. So this difference cannot belong to capital C. Therefore, either C or C hat must not belong. And since each of them, you know, we pick with, uh, with, with uh, probability half, we're done. Okay, so, uh, so now what's the communication cost? That was the, the, the correctness, you know, and we're repeating log D times to make sure the probability is high that we get, get all the linearly independent equations. Well, for all the equations that are accepted, well, at most d are accepted into c, the communication is d squared l, right? d equations, d coefficients, l bits per coefficient. For the others, well, the point is that you don't need to actually send the original equation to, to, to test whether it's in the span and whether it's um, uh, uh, infeasible. Uh, what you can do, or, or whether it's in the span, what you can do is you can indeed uh, 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 just do the send, the, send all the coefficients modulo a large random prime uh, with log, you know, uh, prime of size poly, polynomial in DNL. And this with, with, with large probability will, will, will pass the test if and only if the original equation passes the test, simply because, you know, uh, at the end of the day, the, the, the number of primes between, um, let's say one and a large enough polynomial in DNL is, 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 uh, is larger than the number of factors of whatever is the final solution. So that's the, that's the, that's the whole algorithm. So that's how you save the uh, time for the equations that are not linearly independent. Okay, so that, that was the upper bound. Now for the lower bound, um, the, the following lemma is the key. Um, I mean, to prove a lower bound for for these settings, we have to produce a distribution on, on inputs, on matrices in this case, so that uh, the algorithm, by the time it knows the answer to the linear system, will have to pin down one of these matrices. And therefore, if the number of these matrices is, is large, that gives you a lower bound of log of this size on the, on the uh, total communication. So, uh, uh, and, the, and the lemma is like this, there exists a set of matrices of size exponential in D squared L, so the logarithm is d squared L, exactly the lower bound we want to prove, with integer entries in this range, minus two to the L to two to the L, 
so that every matrix is non-singular. And uh, the solution to the equations Sx equal to E1 and Tx equal to E1 for any two S and T are different. So basically, mm -hmm. the solutions to the linear system are for, for all these matrices, for the linear system with, the, with this fixed right-hand side, are all distinct. Once you have this, you know, the randomized lower bound is, is easy. You know, we, we give server one a random matrix from this collection. And in order for the coordinator, which is a different server, to know the solution, you know, you have to communicate at least log of the size of this number of bits, which is this right out. And then for the deterministic lower bound, um, uh, we, we, we use the intermediate classical problem of checking the equality of two binary strings. Uh, this has a deterministic lower bound of, uh, of N. And, uh, and then that's for two players. And then we, we use, use a reduction from this two player problem to the S player problem, which picks up a factor of uh, S over log S. And that's how the whole lower bound is shown. Now, the lower bound lemma here, the existence of this, uh, turned, turned out to be quite interesting. Uh, in order to prove this uh, uh, um, existence of this very large collection of integer matrices that are non-singular and have uh, distinct uh, solutions to a linear system, um, we analyze a, perhaps a more basic problem, a random integer matrix. Uh, and the question is, what is the probability that it's singular? So this is the key step in, in showing the existence of this uh, large collection of matrices. So, so every entry of the matrix is picked IID random, so random matrix in the standard sense. Uh, and uh, uh, the entry, the way we make it an integer is that it's a sum of T random plus minus ones. Okay? The sum of T random plus minus ones. So in principle, it's anything between uh, plus T and minus T. And uh, what we show is that the probability that this matrix is singular, the determinant is zero, is uh, T to the minus constant times D. Uh, this extends previous results of, um, you know, this is a well-studied uh, subject for other reasons. Uh, uh, and previously, this was known for uh, binary matrices and for matrices with bounded entries. But uh, the, the proof ideas there were powerful enough that although, although the result doesn't follow, you can use them to, to derive this bound. Okay, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, linear systems. Now, uh, oops, excuse me. Um, where do we go from here? Uh, you know, linear systems we can think of as L2 regression, uh, the exact case. And, and so next we want to uh, 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 look at an interesting widely studied problem these days, partly because of uh, machine learning, and that's LP regression, um, where P is not necessarily two. And uh, this is indeed a, a, a very common paradigm with lots of very nice techniques in the usual sequential uh, single server model. And the goal is to output a one plus epsilon approximate solution. Uh, there are many attractive previous approaches based, which can be classified as sketching and sampling. You, know, you pick a subset of the rows or subset of the entries and that can already give you an approximation. Or you take linear combinations of the given matrix with uh, random linear combinations with, with, with sparse uh, vectors and that, that also lets you build solutions. Um, these powerful uh, techniques uh, give you uh, uh, these, this type of bounds for, uh, think of P as a constant for now. Um, uh, uh, dimension to the power of P over two divided by epsilon squared. And uh, both these dependencies, at least separately, were uh, recently shown to be necessary for these methods for sketching and, and sampling. And so a general question, independent of the distributed setting is, can you go beyond sketching and sampling? Uh, so for L1 regression, uh, sketch and solve gives you ST squared L plus D squared L over epsilon squared. I'm highlighting the epsilon squared. What we can, uh, and that's the communication cost, you know, by, by, if you do it in the S server model by just uh, implementing a, a known sketching algorithm. And what we can show is improve the epsilon squared to epsilon in this coordinator, sort of the harder model. And the idea is to combine um, sampling based precondition with the accelerated first order methods, which use the gradients. Um, uh, so, so we use this Lewis weight preconditioning, which has been very effective for L1 regression. Uh, the gradient oracle itself can be implemented efficiently, and then use accelerated gradient descent in, a, in the distributed setting to improve the dependence on epsilon. Um, so you can see that the complexity in terms of dimension went higher, but the dependence on epsilon uh, got better. So there is some more to the story is perhaps the main message of this part. Um, similarly, if you look at the dependence on P, uh, the perhaps most interesting case is when P is infinity 
And when you want to minimize the infinity norm, the maximum deviation here, and here sketching and sampling really don't really help much. We have this d to the p over two type of lower bound. Uh, however, it can be reduced to linear programming, right? And uh, uh, by embedding LP in L infinity, you can also get a one plus epsilon approximate solution uh, 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 by solving an LP with roughly D over epsilon squared variables. So this linear programming based approach is known. And uh, this leads to the question, what's the complexity of uh, linear programs, the communication complexity of linear programs? Uh, and, and so, you know, many of the known linear programming algorithms operate in the real RAM model where you, you count the total number of operations, uh, don't necessarily worry too much about the bit sizes because you, at the end of the day, you say that you, going to give an epsilon approximation and you might, your dependence is log one over epsilon. But uh, we're going to focus on exact LP where you really want to solve the final answer uh, to, the, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the exact answer. And uh, turns out there are three uh, so, uh, classical algorithms that can all be adapted nicely and, and give us uh, with a little bit of effort and give us nice bounds. One is uh, Clarkson's algorithm, another is the center of gravity method, and, and then another one that's also useful in this distributed setting is Seidel's algorithm. Um, I won't have time to go through all of these uh, uh, in detail, but uh, let me just say that the way Clarkson's algorithm works is it sample d squared constraints, uh, find an optimal solution to this subset sampled, and then you change the weights of uh, the, the constraints by repeating some of the constraints. Basically, you're going to take the constraints that were not satisfied and double them. Uh, and, and this sort of uh, adaptive sampling, almost like boosting really, is uh, uh, enough to lead you to a feasible solution in not too many iterations. You need only about d log n iterations. And it's uh, really well suited for distributed uh, 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 algorithms because the sampling is maintained implicitly and can be done with low communication. So this gives us s d cube l plus d to the four l in the coordinator model. Um, perhaps uh, an interesting thing here is that one can improve this by a factor of d if you smooth every coefficient. So the, the whole challenge here is not having to send the precise description of the solution at any point from one server to the other server. And so the obvious fix is let's round. But if you round, you really lose the accuracy and you're no longer sure if it's an exact solution, if it's a solution. Um, so, and one way to, to, to highlight this is to say that if we smooth to very small, to exponentially small numbers, so if we smooth two to the minus L, meaning we add a, a, a Gaussian of variance two to the minus L to every coefficient, then the communication complexity becomes S D squared L for this algorithm. And something interesting going on here, uh, which is you know, getting close to the lower bound uh, of D squared L. Uh, similarly, one can adapt the center of gravity method uh, for, for, uh, in this setting. And here um, in, the, in the center of gravity method, the, the uh, idea is to maintain a polytope of the feasible solutions. And uh, uh, you know, uh, we, 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 you propose its center of gravity as a solution. Uh, if it's not uh, uh, feasible, then there'll be a violated constraint. In intersect with that linear constraint to reduce the polytope and repeat. Now the point is that because you're uh, cutting uh, near the center of, or through the center of gravity, this reduces the volume of the polytope by a constant factor, not half, but uh, constant, one over uh, one minus one over e. And therefore, the number of rounds is, is bounded. It's uh, d squared L. But uh, you know, we, we have an issue, the same issue here. We can't afford to compute each center exactly because then once again, we're sending a lot of bits in each round. So we use the following uh, 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 variation of the center of gravity method. Instead of sending the violated constraint exactly, we will round the, 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 the constraint itself to an epsilon net, you know, we'll fix it to a grid. Uh, but this grid is not a fixed grid. The grid depends on the inertial ellipsoid of the current polytope, which every server can compute. So basically, all servers maintain the polytope and an ellipsoid for that polytope, and then we'll round the constraint according to that, that ellipsoid, so epsilon times that ellipsoid. And, and, and the point is that even though this is not exactly center of gravity, as long as you are close enough to the center of gravity in this ellipsoid norm, you still cut off a constant factor of the volume and you would preserve the same guarantees. So epsilon being one over poly D suffices and this gives us communication complexity of S D Q value. So to try to uh, wrap up, uh, there's a question of is linear programming inherently more difficult than solving a linear system? It's not clear. 
um, uh, recent results in uh, linear programming algorithms suggest that maybe not, but they are, that those are in the real RAM model. In fact, they, they state their, their uh, uh, um, algorithms as being, you know, solving a polylogarithmic number of linear systems. Here, you know, to focus this, you know, it's, there seems to be a gap. In communication complexity, there is a gap, even in constant dimension. So checking feasibility of linear systems you can do in S log L, and solving linear systems you can do in S plus L. This is constant dimension, right? D is constant. But checking feasibility of linear programs is already S times L, okay, in the coordinator model. I won't mention the Blackboard result uh, since it's running close to time. Um, I also would like to mention that uh, Similar results for constant dimension were obtained by independently by Asadi, Karpov, and Zhang. So uh, to conclude, you know, communication complexity, as, as in the past, reveals surprising structure, even about well-known optimization problems. And here are some um, questions that I'd love to understand better. Uh, the first is the randomized communication complexity of linear programming. You know, if the upper bound can be improved, that suggests that there are some really interesting new algorithms to be found. And if the lower bound can be improved, then likely we need something stronger than the, than the usual uh, equality of uh, bit strings. Uh, but but it's, it's, I don't know where the answer is. Um, and then there's a question of, you know, uh, maybe moving back the focus to exact LP. Can we actually get faster algorithms for exact LP? The current algorithms, if you try to uh, uh, turn them into exact, you know, put in the epsilon that you need, which would be exponential in D times L, you know, you, first of all, you need more total time, but then you also need to spend more time computing additions and subtractions and so on. So there's a pretty, pretty large overhead, something like D squared L squared uh, over to do the exact version. Finally, the case of linear regression is, 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 is of particular interest and it would be great to resolve these gaps because that is also suggesting uh, maybe more strongly the possibility of new algorithms. Uh, I'll stop here, thank you. Thank you, so sorry. Okay, the video is coming up. Thanks uh, for for your talk, uh, Santosh. Uh, again, uh, please uh, um, write questions. Uh, here's the first question coming. If I understood correctly, the LP regression results are for multiplicative approximation. What happens if you look at additive approximation instead? Right. Um, uh, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, for p equal to infinity, uh, indeed, then we reduce to linear or, or greater than log n. So then, then we go to linear programming and then more or less what we've stated here is the state of the art. For, for p equal to one or, or even two, um, I don't know, I have, I, I have to, I'd have to check to see what we can do better, yeah. I'll... Okay. There's a, a second question. Does your lower bound also give a lower bound on finding the rank of the constraint matrix? Oh, yeah. Um, I see. So is there a simple reduction? Um, yeah, I, I, I think we can uh, do that because just uh, checking if the rank is uh, is uh, if it's full dimensional or not, we, we can prove the lower bound. The lower bound will extend to showing whether the set of constraints is full rank or not. So at least if the rank is part of the input, yes. Then. Okay. Uh, so a, a third question is, um, uh, what is known for uh, SDPs or other convex programs? Ah, great. So, so we, we discuss uh, this in the paper, uh, but the algorithm I outlined for uh, linear programming, the center of gravity method, uh, extends directly to, to, to convex programs and SDPs. And indeed, we, we have a brief section uh, where we uh, bound the communication complexity. And once again, there is a factor D gap because the only known lower bound we have is, uh, is, the, is through linear systems. We don't have a non-trivial lower bound for uh, optimization beyond linear systems. Okay, thanks a lot. So we, we are out of time. So I would like to thank the speaker again. Thanks, Santosh, thank you. for your talk. And let me just remind that if people have further questions and discussions, you can do it uh, through the Slack channel.